I'm Nikia from, that's my native name. That was given to me by Ene and a Tata, my dad and my mom. I was raised in Northern Alberta. It's called, it used to be called Habe and they changed it to Hay Lakes. It was Hay Lakes and then Habe, I think. Anyways, I was raised there. And in a log cabin, pretty much most of my childhood upbringing until I was teen, I was raised in a log cabin. We had to do a lot of work because we had no running water or anything like that. We had to pitch water and we had a wood stove so we had to cut lots of wood and summertime it was a lot of hunting, berry picking to preserve a lot of food for the winter. So winter is longer in those days. I think it was very really cold. My mom used to make hides out of moose. And that's what she used to for footwear, like moccasin and, and jacket. I, Mom made living by making crafts, like she would make mostly wraps around and mucklucks and were like when you, uh, it might, with my dad being a trapper, uh, he, he had pelts and stuff and pelts that are not, only he knows he won't make much money. My mom is fortunate to get beaver pelts and stuff to make her slippers for trimming for her slippers and um, mucklucks and she even made mittens like moss bags and stuff and moss bags are quite popular it's coming back and i'm pretty busy with it but with moss bag um it, in those days um Maybe before I was born or people didn't have diapers and stuff and uh, people would use moss. That's why they call it, uh, that means uh, moss bake <laughs> directly. Moss, like you get it from moss cake. We were small and we go to this moss cake and we pick moss, real nice chunky ones and, and we put them on the on the little branches all around to dry and my mom would bag them that with the moss bag you kind of take a cloth a piece like a diaper you don't have much diapers in those days and and then you kind of have a little make a little like a pillow and you stuff moss in there dry moss and then you put that under the baby around the like a diaper that's why we call it uh, <laughs> moss bag. <laughs> there was a church, they built a church and then I think it was in 51, that's when I was born, that's when they built the residential school at that time. So a lot of my siblings were went there and eventually I end up going to residential school so I can't say I'm a survivor of residential school. So it's good and it's bad and uh, but we learn a lot of uh, outside world living and so which was good for that reason we were kind of prepared to if we ever left the reserves that we would understand the outside world. Now, as I'm getting older, I retire and don't have much to do. So it's been like me six years I got back into my traditional ways. So and I'm doing pretty good right now. I self-taught a lot of stuff that 
my mom taught me and she did a lot of sewing so I wash her a lot and so and I develop a lot of trait from her. So now I'm working on the hide which was uh, done a lot to our traditional and this is the height that my mom and my Ene height, I'll say Ene, it means mom in my language and top means my dad. So anyways, they made height. When she passed on, I took them all. So I could, it already scraped, the hair is scraped by them. And and then the, the flesh part is all down, so I got a, quite a few of these uh, prepared hides. So now I'm working on it to accomplish <laughs> what, what they taught me. We didn't have much income as money and stuff. So my dad was a trapper. He trapped pretty much all his life and he had a huge trap line. So he used to be gone in early October to, he would come home for Christmas and we would bring loads of fur. Like he had two dog sled, huge ones. They were used to be just packed with furs and the fur buyers come at that time when he knew the men are coming. In those days, you either flew in um, or there was a, a winter roads that they used to get in, because it's about uh, over 100 kilometers to our nearest uh, little town, which was high level. When we moved to uh, Hebei, uh, they did um, uh, had a that my dad built a log house. That's our home for the time. At that time, my di mom did a lot of craft and for people that come in and go when oil company start developing that area. My mom made a lot of uh, craft for them, like mogas and mucklucks and s stuff like that for an income. And that's where I, I am with my craft now. And I'm very thankful and thank them pretty much every day for her doing, teaching me all these traditional ways, I guess you could call it. So I'm trying to keep it up as much as I can. With the dry, uh, unfinished finished flesh and scraped hide, what we do is uh, you bring, uh, in those days, they didn't, my mom used snow water or river water. We didn't have tap water, but I was told not to use tap water. It has chemicals in it. it everything done is natural for, doing hides so I she I don't have any rain water but we found a spot where there's spring water so we her spring water to soak my hide in once I I put brain on it I use uh, uh, pure brain and there's People use different things. I heard some use mayonnaise and some use um, soap bar, the real sunlight pure bar that I use that one with the brain a bit, not much. And oatmeal, I just put a bit of oatmeal in it. But first I make a broth with soup bones, anything that has nice chunky marrow in it, kind of make a, a little pot of broth in it and take the 
um, marrow out of the bone and disregard the bone. And, and then I put my brain in it. I kind of squish it around. I usually one cow brain or uh, moose brain is pretty much for a, a high design. You put it on the hair side. You put the paste on the hair side. And then if I have a little bit left over, I put it on the other side too. I just do it both ways to, to be on the safe side. And it worked fine for me because this is, it's working out pretty good. After that, you smoke it over the fire. You got to keep an eye on it. And I always have a water bottle that if it comes into fire, I just spray a little bit. So it keeps the smoke and you smoke it on both sides. And that, you do that for about three days. The high will come a little kind of tanny, dark tanny smoke looking tanny and then once you're satisfied you fold it really tight and you get a bin with prepared water which i get from the spring i kind of it's got to be lukewarm to a touch can be hot and you soak it i put uh, a rock over it so it would keep the height down into the water and then I would let it sit and then once in a while I turn it around, put the rock back in it and a good day. I've went four days. So it depends. Like once it's soft, then I play with it in the water. I kind of rub, take rubber gloves that has good grip, grab it and just wash it. Just like you're washing toes by hand. Keep playing with it till it it's feels soft. And then I take it to the pole that, and then I alternate ringing like every, I would, this lens, I have another rod that I go the opposite. Make sure you use the same length, kind of weave it in, and then you start ringing it and pull, kind of ring it, pull. Till, you're, till it comes into a little twist, like a, like an intestine, <laughs> and then it would and hold it like that till the water drips a little bit, drip, and then do the other end, the other likewise, opposite way. Once is the water is all gone, then I, you, then I put it on here. You'll, you'll be a bit wet, but I, I scrape, I really scrape. You, you want to get rid of all the, the thin skin, they call it, a, in my language, you call it a bizet. So that a bizet has to come all off, like this one is getting better, but it, you would see these sort of things. So you work on it. I know it's a lot of work, but you know, you got to, this might be ready, but I'm not satisfied with it, but you got to keep ringing it like that, uh, scraping it. And then once I'm pretty happy with it, I would soak it again. I would soak the height, let it sit, maybe for a day, maybe a day or two, you would tell it's really soft. Then my last job will be, wringing it really good. And once you wring this, after second soaking, you could soak as much as you want. If some hides are tougher, especially a bull moose, it's very tough, especially around the back to this part. It's really tough. So sometimes soaking doesn't make it soft, but you could scrape quite a bit like what I'm doing and there's a thicker part, you will work on it and scrape and scrape, and all this uh, would come out. And if you're not satisfied, if it's still uh, not soft, it, it looks like it's tough, don't be afraid to soak it again.
I've done like I've soaked one hide already about three or four times so don't worry about it if it's thin it's so iffy you, you got to be really careful when you're ringing you don't want to ring real tight because you, you might rip it so but with bull moose and a big cow moose you could soak it and pull on it it's it's tough and once you've done the last one you ring it and then you go and i have another pole that i use for uh once it's you're it's dry a little bit not much wet then you pull over the fire you could have a light fire not smoke just a light fire that would as you're pulling would dry and that too you got to alternate if you pull this length alternate to the other length likewise and then keep doing that turning some people have quite a few people standing over the fire and pull on each end and you go every little inch of the of the height pulling so that pulling helps it stretch whatever if it's tough part you pull on it it will stretch and and tell your satisfaction till it's almost dry then i put it back on the bar and do more scraping and then it'll be softer you scrape till you've got no more little fluff coming out that all that little member i know whatever you call it it, it, it will come off then then when you're tanning, it won't be tough. All that scrape, like you work more on the flesh side. The flesh side is the one you tan. So you work on it till all that little membrane, like this one. You work on it, this part will come off. Not so much around the edge, but I'm trying to get every piece of pipe as I can. So I will work on that one. So, and then, when you're satisfied, then it's ready to tan. You cut off as much piece you want all around. And then you make sure you keep track of the flesh side, has to go inside the hair side of the outside and you sew it. And you sew all around and leave an opening at the bottom and you tack three little strings on top to tie to the pole so it hangs make i use old jeans to make a skirt you make a skirt about oh enough uh, so make sure you got this opening that you could check the fire in um, and use, uh, I use old um, poplar, like it, uh, it don't tail it. <laughs> In my language, we say it don't tail it. It rotten wood, it's, it's good. Well, I, I never use spruce because my parents, my mom, and they never use spruce, so I use poplar, old. You could find it laying around way in uh, any country where people go hunting and stuff. That's where I pick them. And you got to attend when you're smoking, you really have to attend it so you don't see any fire. I always have a bottle of water with me, so if it goes on fire, just spray it to make sure there's no fire. You want that heat, but smoke. The old wood. <laughs> While we're hunting, we that's when I smoked the hide. We kind of dug a hole in the ground, and that's where um, uh, you make a little fire in that little hole. It can be big. And then you kind of make a, we made a pole across to tie the height. Like we, I saw a little string on top. So you kind of let it hang like a tube and make, make sure 
don't forget that one thing is I see a lot of I bought pipes before and people saw it but if there's a hole like that just use an old jean or canvas little piece and just enough sold that piece then uh, like it's easy it'll tan but then when you cut you could cut really close to it and flat I like my height to be really like a blanket I don't if it's pulled too much it gets ripply I bought height like that it's ripply and it's really hard to even cut pattern from it and it's to me that stretching you would you saying you get more height but when you use it for crab it's very difficult to cut uh, that ripply as they want to stretch it as much to make more bigger height it, it's not worth it and make sure this it's all closed in before you start putting on the smoke or the smoke will it, it escape a day if you need if you say which of the need that way it, it won't you'll have a these with smoke trap you get a better uh, uh, result from tanning when you finish tanning inside if you want to edit it inside out put it inside out don't attach action put attachment like you did the other one then you could try to tan it just a little bit lighter see this was more towards the fire that's why I got a little bit of darker and this is softer like color so hard then you too good to hard oh I hope you enjoyed and learned something from this video because uh, it is hard work but you know when you accomplish something like that it, you could make money with it you could sell it hide sells anywhere at the most three grand so you could make a good income on it I hope you enjoy watching this video. If you have any comments or questions, you could, uh, I'll try to answer most of it as best as I can. 